Welcome to this one-to-one -one on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say our special guest today is St. Johnson goalkeeper Xander Clark. Xander, um, first and foremost, welcome. Uh, great to chat to you um, about not only your career and the, the double uh, at St. Johnston, but um, obviously your hopes and ambitions uh, as a goalkeeper moving forward. First of all, can you believe that you were part of such a memorable season for St. Johnston? Um, no, <laughs> it took me a right good few weeks to for it to actually like, sink in. Still probably don't think it's properly sunk in. Um, you, know, you always hear people saying probably something that you look back on at the end of your career and, and really that's when it'll sink in properly. Um, but no, just to be, to be a part of it, just to win one cup um, was... I think would have been excellent for us, but to to go on and do and do the double was quite remarkable. Yeah, well, was there a moment in the season where you actually thought you looked around the dressing room and thought we've got not a bad side? Where you know the manager's good? Did you did, did you get that feeling? We, we got the feeling. I think more so with you know sort of the the start to the season that we had. It was it was poor. Well, not poor, but results weren't going for us. Um, but you would come in after games and like that, you would look around the change room and, you know, look at the quality of player that we had. We knew that, you know, it just needed that one sort of result for us to, to turn the corner and it was probably it was probably the start of the Betfred Cup that was that sort of momentum changer for us. You know, we went and um, played Kelly Hearts and got a victory and then obviously um the second game and that was, was seven 0 So it was one of them that the, the confidence started to sort of come out in the boys and, and we started turning in, in good performances and, and getting the results that we deserved from them. Yeah, oh, you've got to pay tribute to the manager. There was, uh, I mean, it's a remarkable um, you know, situation that he found himself in as well. Um, you know, a young manager trying to make his way. Did you sense that the boys were responding to him? What is he like? No, of course, the boys were, were buzzing off him, you know, what the manager brings, you know, I've, I worked with him as an assistant manager, I was I was part of the club when he was a player and he's he's always enthusiastic in everything he does. I think it's also good to touch on as well the fact that, you know, it was a first managerial job, but it's hard at times, but remember it was at the start of COVID, you know, we were, his first sort of three, four, five weeks was getting the boys in in groups of three and four, um, so... When you think of going for that to, to what we achieved at the end, it was, was magnificent. But no, as I say, it's he's somebody that, you know, great enthusiasm about the game and, and wants to focus on the finer sort of details, you know. Nothing will just be a sort of half-hearted effort. Everything will, everything will go into what he wants to do and what he wants to achieve. And it certainly rubbed off, you know, the boys bought into it straight away. Um, it was a different system for us to, to play, you know. We were, we were used to having four at the back, but... You've seen the, the qualities and the and the players that we had and you know thankfully for us we, we maximised it. Tell me about that dressing room because you need special characters. Are there are there players in there that you actually think, oh it's great going into work today? Ah, it's brilliant. It's it's something you know, I've been at the club thirteen years and it's always been something that that we've had's been good change rooms, you know, everybody's always together. Um sometimes at the minute, you know, you can go in and like Sean Rooney's too lively for quarter past eight in the morning but he's brilliant you know there's and like that there's you know it's there's never a day where you're sort of going in and going ah oh, don't really can't really be bored going in and seeing these boys today um because like that we are we're, we're a good group we're, we're all together we all want to do well for each other and like i say that's sort of been something that's been part of the club since i've been there um is that togetherness and having a, a good change room you know everybody's together there's no no, there's not many folk that think they're sort of bigger than the club. Um, everybody's very grounded, and it's just it's a good laugh. Yeah, uh, is there a is there a, a ringleader, uh, someone that brings a song to it, brings a joke, brings a laugh? Big runs, big Sean Rooney's, Honestly, you not believe how much energy the boy's got, and then he just wants to wants to take part in everything, whether it be winding somebody up or like you say, getting up on the on the karaoke or that. I think actually the manager had said it in an interview. One day he came into training, we honestly have never seen something like this. It used to be like one of the pimped up cars you've seen back in the day. This big sub with a boombox thing and that was him. Connected the phone up to that and away he went and that was him for the rest of the season. That run in the League Cup, um, we'll talk about the final in itself, but what in particular pleased you? Was there, was there a specific game where you thought this is really clicking? Um, 
as I say, at the start in the, in the group stages was probably a point where we thought this is clicking in terms of our full season. Um, as I touched on before, we with results not going away, we were putting in the same sort of performances, but just when they get the results. Um, but probably for me, obviously the finals going to be the the most enjoyable. But the probably the semi final and the you know the Hibs game to be under the cosh for so long to then you know sort of in the first half to then come away three 0 winners was was a special moment. And at that stage, you thought you know. It doesn't really matter who we get in the final here, we're, we've got a fanciful chances and you know, it could have been anybody in the league or whatever, it was, the confidence was that high. Was there a, a speech, is he that type of manager, a, an inspirational moment or was there a game plan that he delivered that said, look, this is what's happening, we've been through this, now let's take him because they're there for the taking? Uh, no, I think it's like any manager, you know, you'll have a wee sort of speech, no, it doesn't need to be massively motivational, you know, the boys are, I think we're, we're big enough in that to know how much sort of games we're meaning in, in that run. Um, but I have, we got half time in the in the semi final, and it was a case of like we've weathered the storm, um, and we were actually playing pretty well going into half time, and it was a case of more of the same type thing. Um, and that he's good, the manager is good in that respect. Well, not one that will come in and you know lose the head too often. Um, it'll need to be a, a really poor performance for him to lose, lose the head. So he's he's one that will. Keep sort of positivity flowing through the through the change room um, at half time or whether it be at full time. You know, it's one of those that well, that's just how he works. And as I say, it, it works off and rubs off on the boys. Yeah, are you superstitious? Nah, I would, I'm sort of. I've got a couple of wee things that I do, but it's not like if I never done them, I wouldn't be too worried on it. Yeah. Okay. Are they are they coming out last or is it is it a jersey or pulling a sock up? No, it's there's usually I'm, I'm all I. I don't know if it's, I just always put left on before right. I don't know if that's superstition or if it's just, that's just how I get ready in the mornings, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, and there's, you know, usually just get, post a punch and bar, bar, post, and then that's usually me. But other than that, I've, I've got nothing, you know, there's a lot of folk buy into it. Um, a lot of folk are really big on superstitions and stuff. But for me, it's, nah, if, if I didn't do any of them, then I wouldn't be too bothered about it. Yeah, I know a lot of players uh, mention the team ethic when they're winning anything, but you must be happy that you've contributed with saves. Yeah, of course, It's a, as a goalkeeper, it's it's what you want to do. Um, you want to make saves, I always say it's, uh, listen, it is our job at the end of the day, but if you can make saves um, and, and the team can get the three points, then it's it's that bit more pleasing. You know, there's been games where you've made saves and, you know, we've been well and truly scurried in games, um, which, you know, it doesn't have the same effect. It's You feel still feel as disappointed um, at the end of the game as, as anybody else. So to, to make big saves and, and it come out in the end as a, a victory is always pleasing. Tell me about the final then. Um, not not exactly the team that you thought you were going to face. No, no, it wasn't. It was, it was one of those, though. I think, like I said, anybody... Going into the sort of semi final stage, would have thought, you know, we've got a right good chance here of winning the trophy. Um, obviously, it was a, a difficult game. We played them a couple of weeks before, and I think it was a, a 1 0 victory again um, down there. And listen, we, we knew what, what we were going to get for Livy. Livy would have knew what they were going to get for us. It was one of those that it would probably was always going to be. I think I said that after the game that, you know, a 1 0 scoreline was, was probably always going to be the. Um, the result that won that won that final and glad that it was us. You know, it was similar to the similar to the semi final. We sort of started a bit ropey um, under the course for maybe not under the course, but probably maybe having more better chances in the first fifteen twenty minutes. And then once we get a sort of rhythm into our game, we we dominated it, get the goal for for big runs, and you know it was one of them that. We never sort of looked out of control of the game at any stage after that. Yeah, he's he's one of those characters that you've mentioned and highlighted them in the dressing room, but on the park, for someone in, in that kind of a full-back role, when he gets to the 20 yards out, I mean, he's not one of those guys that panics. I mean, he, no. I've seen him from the edge of the box trying to curl it past the goalkeeper. He has. He's, listen, he's, he's somebody that, you know, he's a, he's a great player. Um, like you say, he's, he's not, no, as you say, one that will get to 
you know, the edge of the box and, and freeze, you know, he's, he is very creative in, in what he wants to do and, you know, sometimes for us it's 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 a good thing to have because he can cut inside and, like you say, he's, he's not afraid to, to go and have a crack to actually in the, in the I think it was a quarter final at Ibrox, I think he had a pop for about 35 yards at the start of the extra time <laughs> on his weak foot, so he's one that he'll, you know, he will try these things and Listen, it'll no, it'll no bother him if it doesn't come off. He'll, he'll just get back in and, and do what he's meant to be doing. Winning the League Cup was one thing. Was it a nightmare or was it still? Were you still able to celebrate and enjoy it as much without the fans? No, you won the. Obviously, you were. It was good to to celebrate. Um, different, difficult one because like that, you know, the skipper's lifted the trophy and a couple of boys have lifted the trophy, and it's like there's nothing coming back at you here. It's like you know, you you watch. Cup finals on the telly, and it's you know play, every player's getting cheered with the trophy, and then it's a sort of lappy honour to go and spend time with the fans and your friends and family and stuff. So, in terms of that, it was a bit you know disappointing, um, but we still managed to have a, a relatively good night. You know, obviously we had Hamilton in the Wednesday night, so it was back in training the next morning for us. So it was um, probably wasn't celebrated as much as us as players and. A coaching staff than that would have liked, um, but we still managed to get, <coughs> excuse me, still managed to get a couple of um, pints in, and we were ready to go again in the, the Sunday morning for Hamilton in the Wednesday. Yeah, I, I met uh, obviously Chris Miller comes in from time to time. Uh, I met Dave Mackay at one of the uh, grounds around Scotland. I said to him, "Can you believe that mob? They've ap- <laughs> <laughs> they've absolutely done you in for the Aps. dinners <laughs> because suddenly, never mind a league cup, Aps. you're going to win a Scottish cup." No, it was, it, listen, it was mad and just, you look at it, obviously, I was I was at Lawn at the time when the, the boys won the Scottish Cup the first time and, you know, you see the sort of celebrations and stuff after that and you think, you know, I wish I was part of it um, and then you get that sort of feeling when, when you win the, the Betfred and then a few months later to go on and, and win the Scottish and make it a double was, pff, folk will say stuff dreams are made of, but I don't think you could, you know, I don't think there'll be many St Johnson supporters or, or players that will have ever dreamt of them being, you know, double cup winners, um, which is, it's just a surreal sort of thing to say still. Yeah, and littered throughout, never mind the League Cup, but the Scottish Cup again, boy, you guys love a penalty shootout, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it, seemed, it seemed to be the um, the trend, um, but no, listen, it was credit to the boys because there was a lot of games where we, we had to dig in um, and, you know, probably lucky to get ourselves to to the penalty stage and sometimes but it was one name that you know the boys are it's something that you you know they practice and they run up to it but no it wasn't something that you know we would have looked at and went geez, that's so speciality here you know it, it was boys taking penalties in the quarter final at Ibrooks that I don't think I've ever seen that penalty before in my life and they step up and slot it away cool as you like and it's just that sort of instinct to think that you know it's at the end of the day it's a footballer taking a penalty, you know, it should be something that you're comfortable doing and it was one of them, you know, as I say, big Jason Kerr, I think I've never seen him practice a penalty in my life and nearly took the net off. Yeah, what about you though, is there an art to it in your mind, do you do you go through and study all the players and the, and the potential way they've been heading it before? Yeah, you, you know, we do a bit of look, looking into it, sorry, but it's one of them, at, at the end of the day it is always a lottery because, you know, it's up to if a player steps up and goes, you know what, I fancy hitting it the other way the day, then you kind of sort of compensate for that. Um, mostly you see players, you know, you watch the videos and you try and work at patterns, but it's you're clutching at straws really. It's just as a goalkeeper, do you get and you know, as soon as you're faced with a penalty, it's a what do you feel in, in that moment? You know, sometimes you get a, a feeling of I think he's going to go here. Probably nine times out of ten, he puts me the wrong way, but um, it's one of them that. It's, I always say it, it's a lottery, it is because it doesn't matter how much studying you do, it's just into what that player wants to do, it's taking the spot kick. Yeah, and if I speak to a million and one St Johnson fans and I look at that road to going on to eventually winning the Scottish Cup, not many of them will miss out you going up. <laughs> I mean, how Chris Kane can even take the goal off you just escapes me, I mean, especially against Rangers. No, nah, it was just one of them, as I say, there was... There's a few times during the season, listen, it's, it's different in league games um, where you've been behind and, and you want to go up and try and salvage something. Um, 
it gets to obviously as I say the last minute and I knew, you know, I think it was, was it two minutes that it had went up on the board and it felt like ten minutes so I knew it was last chance saloon and what did the manager say when you said I'm going up? I don't even think I looked up, I think I just <laughs> took off. Um there was nobody stopping me and you know, as you say it was to get on the end of it and and for strikers to be strikers and, and uh, to be fair to Kano, I don't even think he knows much about it. It's probably a bad header, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be a few headers of the ball out there saying it's a shocker, but I was just glad that I could have got something on it and, you know, delighted to see Kano tumble over the line and then that sort of, as you say, that euphoria from that to then having to try and compose yourself to go into a, a penalty shootout was, was one that was not tough, but you still had that buzz from you know, getting there in the first place, it was one of them, this is sort of the moment you need to try and, you know, that that header and tapping's not going to take us through to the semi-final, you know, and we need to, we need to make sure that we win this penalty shoot and thankfully for us we did. Yeah, when you dispose of Rangers in those next two games, did you think, you're, you're, is there such a thing as your name's on the cup? No, there's not, it was, it was one name that we were, I think after obviously winning the bet, Fred and then, you know, you put put out the favourites, it's you bought it then go on and, and win it, you know, so we sort of had that no, that was what our aim was to we knew it was going to be you know, still faced with a couple of difficult games, but when you've got that sort of taste for it, you want to go and, and do more, um and try and do it. And you know, as I say, thankfully for us we, we managed to do it and just mad, mad scenes. Yeah, I was going to say to you, because you wouldn't have been the favourites going into it, because I remember the game itself and I thought, you know, Hibs fancy themselves here to get the cup again. You guys, was there a was there a different game plan or was it still the same calm approach from the gaffer? No, it was still the same calm approach, you know, it was one of them similar to, um, to going in against Livingston, you know, we played Hibs I think two games before the final and we came away with a victory for Easter Road um, so that sort of gave us a no, a confidence boost, you know, that we could we could go and beat them. Um listen, we were under no illusions that it was going to be be a difficult game, which it panned out to be. Obviously it could have been more comfortable for us if we if we don't miss the penalty. Um but you know, fair play to, to Big Matt Macy, it's an incredible double stop from him. Um and it gives them that sort of lifeline and made the, the last maybe 10, 12 minutes a that bit more nervy for us but as I say, credit to the boys, you know, we, we defended well, we had obviously the the, the penalty scare of our own where, you know, I think it's Boyle um, gets booked for diving, but at the time when you see, you know, you see a player hit the, hit the deck, you think, oh no, and you hear the whistle go, you think, jeez, so, um, as I say, it was a credit to, to everybody really for defending from the front and then when it got to us, you know, in the last sort of 10, 12 minutes, it that came into the box, centre half to stay up it was joyful for me yeah absolutely I was going to say to you I mean I love the way I've said was it the same calm approach from the manager <laughs> the manager walks in and says look Rooney will score the winner <laughs> <laughs> but that that was the thing like it was I'm sure I think it might actually have been the big man was saying about like the odds and everything that somebody had sent over to him it was like 17 million to one or something for, <laughs> for us to win both cups 1-0 and him to score and in the same minute, although I'm not sure if the Scottish Cup one might be a minute earlier, I think that might be a wee typo somewhere. But no, um, if you could, you know, I'm sure he would never have dreamt of that either as I speak about, like, you know, saying it's stuff dreams are made of for him to, most on the, the Betfred running as well, you know, he scored the, the quarter final, the semi final, and the final, um, and then to go on and, and score the winner in the, the Scottish Cup final was. Brilliant. If he's unbearable off the pitch without scoring a goal, he must have been unbearable that night. Ah, it was brilliant. <laughs> he was in he was in great form. The the bus journey for for um for Hamden to Perth, I think that must have took us about three and a half hours um <laughs> to, to get up the road. A few stop offs for for more carry out and um we actually ended up stopping in Dunblane for one of our pit stops and obviously managers from Dunblane so you know, there was there was a few folk wanting to, to get the photo with the gaffer and the trophy, so while he was doing that, I think, you know, the boys must have guzzled in our couple of crates and, <laughs> and managed to sneak in behind them for some more. So it was um nah the big man was brilliant. He's he's the one that's in charge of all the music on the ox cable, so you get some right classics for him, he likes his his old school dance. Yeah, if it's yes sir I can boogie for Scotland, what is it you think is the theme for St Johnson? 
I don't know, we sort of seem to adapt that Pump It Up song, didn't we? I don't know where that came from. It was, <laughs> that was just one that, I, th- I don't know, I think they must have played it after one of the one of the games in the, in the build-up to it and the fans sort of started to adapt it and, you know, any time after, you know, winning games, it, it would come on and listen, it, it got it got the fans and stuff on board with it. You know, it was, um, they obviously they had their own their own lyrics to it and that was probably the the one in the most sort of the Scottish Cup um, running that that was the the sort of St Johnson song. Yeah, uh, uh, just to to finish on the the cup finals, what does it mean to you to be part of the club's history in a double winning season? No, it's as I said on at the start, it'll probably be something that you look back on when you're finished playing and and it'll really sink in then. But to it still feels weird um, actually saying it to folk. You know. Like, you're a double cup winner. You would you would never have dreamt it. It's one that I'm immensely proud of. You know, um, as I say, I've been at the club for 13 years, and you know, to to go and win the Scottish Cup once was was something. And as I say, the the boys like cup ties, you say, Midge, all them, um, to for them to win that, you know, they were well thought of in the in sort of the club's history. But for us to then go and trump it with with two in the one season, it's it means a lot to to have been part of it and you know still a lot of familiar faces that, that were there for me from the beginning you know to see Liam Craig do it um, obviously leaves the club in the in the win the Scottish Cup the year he leaves and joins Hibs and leaves Hibs and the year he leaves them they win the Scottish Cup so to for him to you know see him lift the, the cups and you know it's a, a club that's close to his heart as well was was a special moment to do it and obviously Muzz as well um, missing the league, uh, the league Cup through injury and it was something that we had said was like laughing and joking, don't worry, you'll, you'll be back in time for the Scottish Cup when we won that. Just the sort of off-the-cuff stuff and to then actually go and do it was was brilliant. The Cup's out of the way. A couple of things I want to ask you before we finish. Um, the season hasn't really kicked in yet. I mean, I still I, th- I still think you have to go through the gears. Is that fair? Yeah, probably. Um, sort of like probably like the start of last season, you know, we, we've played played some nice stuff at times. I think obviously the, the European games were great for us, but it was one name that, you know, we trying to play that Wednesday, Sunday, um, took a lot out of the boys. Um, there were big big games for us and put a lot into them mentally and physically. Um and sort of the games after that was was when we were sort of not our best and, and not picking up results. Um but we've we've found a, a decent little bit of form. Um, got a couple of wins under our belt, and you know, looking forward to to trying to really push on. Um, try and you know pick up as many points as we can, and and see see where this season takes us. Now, I don't know how many times I'm going to interview you and get the chance to say this next thing, but <laughs> how difficult is it going to be to try and retain the cup? No, listen, it'll be it'll be a difficult task. Obviously, we've got. Semi final to look forward to, <laughs> which is is going to be an our, you know, special moment for the club. Obviously, this time there'll be fans in attendance, so it'll almost be a way for them to, to get back to Hamden. And you know, hopefully for us, we can. You know, obviously, under no illusions, it's going to be a, a really difficult game for us, but you know, one that we'll go into and try and sort of feed off a of stuff that we had done last season. Yeah, and that sort of mindset to to try and get the the best possible result for us and, and try and make it back through in our final and, like you say, try and retain the cup. Is this the best semi-final? I mean, obviously Rangers and Hibs is in the other one lying in wait, but is this the best semi-final because maybe Celtic haven't gone through the gears yet? Maybe they're not at their peak? Yeah, listen, they, they'll, they'll probably be sitting saying the same, that, that you know they've probably not found their best form at the minute, but there's still plenty of football to be played before, before the semi-final, so there's still time for us and themselves, you know, to, to try and find that, that good run of form where, you know, you're putting in good performances and, and getting victories. Um, obviously, a completely different scenario for them, you know, the, the stature of the club, you know, they, they're they looking to be winning every week. Like, I'm not saying that we're not, but, you know, that expectation's on them to be, to be winning every week. Um, but for us, we just need to focus on what we're doing. And to finish, um, Xander Clark involved in the Scotland squad. Xander Clark's still on the edge of it and we as a nation are hoping that we can somehow, through the playoffs, get to the Qatar World Cup. Are you determined to try and force your way into his thoughts again? 
yeah, obviously, listen, the, the quality of goalkeeper in Scotland's high at the minute. Um, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for me, but listen, it's I've had that taste for it now. Um, and it's it's up to me on, on how I perform. If I keep performing well, then you know, it would be it'd be great to, to get back in the set-up, as you say. Hopefully, um, hopefully get to, you know, the World Cup. It, obviously, it'd be everybody's dream to, to go and be a part of your, your country. Um, at a World Cup, but listen, if if it's not to be, then you know, hopefully it's one that we can we can get to, and you know, as a as a fan, be you know supporting the boys while they're there, and it's listen, it's it is it'll be on my mind to to try and try and get in back in. As I say, I've had that taste for it, um, and it's it's definitely something that I want more of. Yeah, Craig Gordon's. You know, I mean, you look at his age. You're 29. You've got another 10 years to go. That's the thing. I'd, I'd be <laughs> delighted if I'm still turning up performances at um, Craig's age the way he's, he's turning them out. So, now nah, listen, it, it's good. It's good um, in terms of that. You know, if you if you look after yourself well and and do the the right things, that you know you can still go and perform at the at the top level. Um, at that age, as you say, still what nine, ten years away from me. So, still, you know. And there'll be a lot of folk that you'll say, you know, 29s, you're getting to your older stages, but in terms of goalkeeping, it's, it's still relatively young, which is, is mad to think. The fact that I've been at, in the game for what, 13 years and you could still have another, you know, 10, 12 years if you if you do the right things and look after your body well. So, as I say, that will be the aim for me is to keep trying to turn in good performances and, you know, if the manager takes notice of them and, and includes me, then, you know, that'll be an hard goal sort of ticked off. Xander, it's been an absolute joy. I hope you're still here and coming back for interviews in the next 10 years. Great to share those memories with you. Thanks for joining us. Perfect. Thank you. Top man, I'm Xander Clark, our one-to-one. Thank you very much to you for watching it. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Hi, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the PLZ Soccer YouTube channel.